All right, we're back with game number two, boys and girls. This match analysis. All right. So let's jump into this game match point. Fredrin this time around. Versus Barats, Fredrin versus Barats lane. Or not lane, jungle matchup. Light on the Mathilda, holy composition, dude. This is a scary comp. Blacklist have a very scary comp too, but my god. There might be a response here. Oh, the jump. Dangerous situation. Flicker forward by Haji, but Light gets up. Holy agility. And Wilderness Blessing for the Terizla. Super active Terizla. Make it work, but even that early on aggression coming out from light, that's really what you expect. And it was almost if that if they would have got that first blood for Black International, it would have been great, but not able to get not the best lane matchup for Oheb in uh, this gold lane, but you can make it work still on the on the Claude. So I'm just really curious to see how this game plays out, honestly, because this is a three game series, right? Unless I I believe it's three games. Each other out, so they're both just vying. Looking at the draft, I honestly, I personally like RSG's draft, especially when they go for all ins. But I, I get how Blacklist drafts can Blacklist draft can work too. They're really good at like hiding and backing, disengaging. But Haji's get picked off there. Yeah, same thing that happened in uh, game number one that we were talking about, but pre first, like we were talking about the second turtle, right? You want to utilize the movement speed around the. Around neutral objectives to rotate towards the opposite side of the turtle so that you can get movement speed back. And it's it really depends on the heroes you have. If you are online before level four, that like technically this Mathilda and Vexana technically, right? You can already have a lot of burst and kill potential, then you can go for that. Demon Cat versus Sensui. Advantage for Sensui on the Fredrin if it's a 50 50. That's why Light's moving forward. They're trying to get as much pressure. Oh my, well played. Wow, wow, wow. Sensui, well played. That was well played. You can never count out Sensui's retribution. Wow, Oheb is winning this out against Kusei. The Master Assassin for Oheb is really doing a lot. A lot of a lot of gold laners have been going for Master Assassin, guys. If you're if you're basically gonna play weak side, if you know the enemy team or both your teams will be playing around neutral objectives, go Master Assassin. You get so much value out of it. If uh, if you're a hero, a hero that can actually fight in the early game, right? Like Claude Carry. This is a matchup where both can fight, and you get so much value off the Master Assassin. Oh, oh circling eagle. Oheb gets knocked up. Has the blazing duet. All good. Oh shit! God damn, demon kite with the brats. Chomping from miles away, bro. Okay. So no 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 action really right now before the turtle before the neutral objective no real reason for them to fight for anything right now just ganks across if they can get kills Kusei getting the advantage back now with the gold minion gold crab yeah yeah light light is uh, wilderness yeah no wonder he's moving on ice yeah skating through the river the power of the agility and the wilderness blessing guys you guys get to places very fast especially on the mathilda with the guiding wind too so much value out of it but yeah terizla's gonna do the same thing basically the agility wilderness blessing they are all gonna basically participate in neutral objective fights so with that terizla utilizing those emblems we just talked about let's see good poke by you eh good steal on the penalty zone as well light Oh, good guiding win. Oh, Penalty oh, zone. Connects on onto Oheb. Oh, Minus Fury. Nice one. Nah, it's for sure going to be Sensui, bro. 
international forcing RSG back. Terrify RSG. Well played to Blacklist. They're purely just gonna go for neutral objective control. And RSG Technically they're they're basically making kind of the a similar mistake to Blacklist in game number one, but they're just trying to out execute. I don't know if it's a mistake. I think it's just RSG style here. Right? RSG just really like to contest your neutral objectives and fight. So if you can punish that by like trading and looking for other ways to win around the map, it's usually really good against RSG. But yeah, Blacklist are just out team fighting them and out taking neutral objectives with the Fredrin, Edith, the Minotaur too against RSG. And that's a gold, like a pretty good gold lead for Blacklist. It's a DHS already going to build to a... Is he going to go Corrosion side second item? It looks like it. Wants more utility for these team fights over the Golden Staff that just does damage. Yeah, for Blacklist, this is a very safe game. For RSG, this is a very scary game because their composition is meant to play for the early neutral objectives and they haven't been able to win the early neutral objectives against Blacklist. Good penalty zone. Yue? No way, he's dead, yeah. Three man minus Fury, the Oheb. Oh, this is free for Oheb, dude. Yep. Oh, oh, wow, Light actually gets out. Yeah, well played to Blacklist again. At this point, Blacklist are just reacting to every RSG proactive move on the map and basically punishing them. And RSG are getting desperate. They're playing way too desperate at this part of the game. I, I don't know why they're playing like this, like super desperate, where they're very down bad for these pickoffs. But yeah, Blacklist are just capitalizing on those mistakes. So I guess we kind of already know from uh, Game 1 and Game 2 the identity of RSGPH. They're really good at team fighting. They're really good at layering their damage. But they need new... They, they basically are kind of one-dimensional in the way that they also basically fight for every neutral objective. Except for this one where, again, at this point, if they still contest for neutral objectives, they're just inting and trolling. They're 3,000 gold behind. They just need to farm now and look for another way to come back. Kuse is already on his DHS. Ah, all right. So, the Claude. So, he goes for the item component and then finishes up the DHS goal. So, DHS first, item component into the Golden Staff. And then now he goes for Corrosion Scythe. Okay. Yeah, now Blacklist can just do whatever they want. They have Tier 1 and Tier 2. Or sorry, Tier 1 and Mid and Bot taken away. So, they go top lane. Take a free turret with the zone. Take control of the enemy jungle too. And RSG have to back away. This is what you need to do when you're ahead, boys. Okay? RSG utilize this as well in game number one. But in game number two, it's blacklist. When you take turrets... You know, I'll just draw it on the map. Pay attention to the map. When you take turrets and you shove these waves, this is basically the area where it's in your control. You can go for the invades here. Like, this side is where the enemy team, the team that's behind, is forced to play around. You have this entire side to play around. So don't ever, especially when you're ahead, just play in your jungle. Your jungle is just a bonus. You have to look at this. as This is your jungle now. You have to control this. Control the, path, the paths as well to take free objectives. Especially when you're this far ahead. And when you have a composition like this. So yeah, full punish just from Oheb is going in. Nothing they can do. <laughs> Free Lord as well, it looks like. there's. It's very hard for RSG to look for anything on the map at this point. Yeah. Oh my... I am not a fan of that engage, man. But I guess they still make it work. Holy shit. Okay, I guess, man. My bad. My bad, bro. Holy shit. There are times where you need to break rules. And Blacklist broke the rule. Like, of just using advantages to play around that with a risky play. But, hey, if you have a clod like Oheb, I guess, I guess you could pull that off, man. What the fuck? Yeah. It went from free to neutral objective to extra free neutral objective. Because they got Nats. That's the only engage tool that they have right now. 
did, and then Ohab went in with the blazing threat to start. God damn, that was freaking... Wow, wow. Well played, dude. Just well played, dude. That was one of the times where you're like... That shouldn't have worked, but it did. Because the players are just that good. <laughs> That was intelligent AF, bro. That was like crazy. Okay. So now what they're doing is... This is what you want to do as well when you're ahead by this much, guys. Okay? And you get the first Lord. I see a lot of this, especially in ranked games. But still in MPL as well. There's a lot of teams who do not know how to manipulate waves um, in this kind of position. When you have, you know, the 7.5k gold lead, when you're this far ahead and you get the first Lord, you don't want to just shove the Lord in. Especially when you're going to try to uh, threaten a base turret. If you're in an even game... Shove it in, three-way push, get tier twos, right? Because tier twos will still be available. But if you're owning by this much, build the wave here. Let it slow push. No one go bot. Every day, just play around these waves. Shove these waves, the one in the middle and top, to try to destroy tier twos. By the time you have destroyed the tier twos, you would have the 40-second mark here to the next wave to spawn. And then this is where you would usually want to build all waves. Or... There's another way to utilize this, which I think Blacklist are going to try to utilize here, which is they're going to try to threaten the base turret. Usually you want to try to build those waves to try to make a, maybe a, a dive or a pickoff uh, onto the enemy team, but you don't actually want to go for the turret. But if you have a composition that dives really well, that can actually siege really well like this, you want to actually layer your minion waves, okay? So with the slow push that is building with the Lord, now you want to shove this wave to crash into... The base turret. I think that's what they're going to do. So it forces or baits out the turret splash. Because the turret has a splash effect, guys. You can see it here. Boom. In a bit. Splash. Boom. You see that? That's a splash effect. Now you've baited out that splash effect. And there's going to be another wave that comes in. And you guys can go for an easy turret take right now. So easy base turret. And even if they lose out in this team fight, it would still be worth it. It would still be a base turret before anything even happens. But they end up just going in with the turret take. So, GG, I guess. 11 minute game? Okay, no, there, there's still no minion, so they still have to recall. But see how effective that is, ladies and gentlemen. When you're able to layer these waves together to bait out the splash and then take the turret for free. And yeah, by the way, if you want to do that, please focus on the turret. I see a lot of teams do that, but then focus on the team fight. Like Yue, if you pay attention to Yue. He was the guy who was actually hitting the turret. The, like here, obviously, everybody was hitting the turret. But Oheb went back. And look at Yue. He knows he can just dash out at any time. So he goes in with the minions. He hits it. He hits it again. And he hits it again. That could have been, like, disastrous for Blacklist if Yue didn't get that turret. Because then RSG would have fought under their own base turret. And then maybe had a chance to win, right? They would have had a chance to win. But because they got that turret, Oheb could just dive in, and it's just freaking easy with an 8,000 gold lead. Just kill them all, man, right? But yeah. Now, another wave. GG. Wow. Oh, it's cleared! Oh, wait, never mind. I thought it was GG. Now it's a fuck up. Now it's a fuck up. Oh man, that okay. Yeah, that was well played. That was well played. Okay, okay. So another thing that you need to understand, guys, this is why you have to pay attention to timers. Timer, the timer in the game is very, very important, very, very crucial. This could have ended up with Blacklist winning, but luckily for RSG, Demon Kite and Aqua cleared out the wave. But look at how they decided to push. They they didn't put they didn't go in like this. Like I mean, in any other situation your roamer would probably be all the way in the front, right? Like, the, you would actually posture up here to, to protect the mini wave. Why they're not doing that is because the mini wave for the enemy team is, is has just spawned, 40 seconds, right? So, these minions will be spawning in. If Haji was up here, then they would, he would take the aggro of all these minions, and they would all basically clump up here to basically deny an end from Blacklist. In the end, RG still did deny the end, but Blacklist still played it perfectly. They waited for all the waves to uh, move forward here to go to their own individual lanes, right? They go mid, go top, and then only three minions here to deal with for Blacklist. Now you can see the frontliners move forward again. So that's what they were doing. Luckily, again, Demon Kai was able to clear it, so they weren't able to end the game, and they were able to actually punish Blacklist. But still, it was, it was really well played by Blacklist. It was a good punish from RSG.
dismount, and Arasjar punishing them hard. For the first time in a while, Arasjar actually crossing the river to a productive Holy fall. shit. They're making their way down mid. They this won't be able to end it. No, they won't be able they to end it. They will get a lot of space to work with. S and S, stonks in space. Stonks in space. Is that a scientific term? Stonks in space. Yes, it is. Ask Stephen Hawking. Right. What? <laughs> hey, <they got laughs> Ask Stephen Hawking. I thought, there was a, I thought there was additional. Uh, I thought something else was to follow, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't. <laughs> All right, 20 seconds until the next. Lord, let's talk about what that earned RSG, right? They, that, they earned so much more know. space around the map. And item. very fortunate for RSG. The base turret that Blacklist cracked was the base turret that is close to the Lord. So the far lane will be still okay. Man like it's it's still manageable for RSG. So now it's uh, back to almost even again. If you take a look at the gold lead. The turret's not so much, but technically because the base turret is only taken down in the bottom lane, it's close side for RSG, not the far lane. So it's still okay. But Blacklist, oh my god, their levels, it's just, I think it's still too much. This is not a, still not a good fight for RSG. Blacklist are playing with their advantage now, though. Bottom lane is slow pushing, even though it's close. RSG will still have to send members down below to clear it. So they're still trying to lure dance this shit. Yeah, playing around the bushes. You don't need to walk up, boys, when you're playing in a Lord Dance, okay? Okay. Yo, Kuse is free hitting. Oh, good, dude. You win. Well played, well played. Wow. Good job. Yue is... Yue is super good, guys. His Valentina. If you look at just his KD 039, it looks like he's... Meh. But... Like, this guy is actually insane right now, bro. Just the little things he's doing, even like getting the base threat earlier, and then like using the penalty zone, zoning the back line, terrifying the back line, splitting the the team composition, the enemy team up. I honestly feel like in this game, like I don't know, since we also deserves MVP, but Ua Ua would be a very close second or maybe even the first choice for me. Big combo and another big combo in response by Blacklist International. Edward stuck on the other side of the wall. Looks like he's gonna be able to get away. Primal Wrath already popped. Demon got taking a lot of damage. He goes back, uses the death and his welcome. Actually, no, he doesn't. He's just mm -hmm. able to get away from that. No, they didn't third. clear up top though, up so there. this Lord is so really RGB not gonna to find defend. any use. But it's all right for Blacklist. They cracked another base shirt open. That was what they were looking for. The Lord is still alive technically. But no, they're just going to back away. It's not worth it to gamble on that. They could have gone three base turrets, I think. But yeah, I think they could have manipulated the waves a bit better to push it together or to utilize the slow push in the bottom lane by with someone going up top after the mid lane base turret gets taken down so that they can actually use the bot wave and the top wave. But it's all good. And for Blacklist, this is still such a big lead. And, um, you know, RG doesn't have a ton. If RG have a ton at this point, then... Uh, it would be a very different story. Yeah, there go. They, they still get it. These waves are too much. And now it's basically GG. There is... 95% GG. 99%. No, 98% GG. There's, there's a 2% chance, obviously. But there's obviously still a chance. But yeah, not, not a big one for uh, RSG at all. Because now it's far late all lanes. It's all lanes slow pushing. RSG will have to constantly be clearing out three lanes. And Blacklist can just play around it. I think there's really not going to be any action for the next few minutes. So we're just going to skip over. Take a look at the items. Rose Gold sold the boots already. Oheb. Edith with the Starlium Scythe as one damage item. Photo and the Blood Wings for Mathilda. Yeah, that's it. And then they just zone RSG away from their own, you know, from the mini, wa mini waves. Now, slow push down below. This is, okay. Uh, why, why aren't Blacklist manipulating the, their waves? Because they don't have to. It's Every every single wave is going to be automatically building to a slow push for Blacklist. Because they have super minions. So, they, they this is the advantage of a base turret. Especially in the far lane. Now, you just play around your lord, your neutral objective. Just lord dance it. And then bottom wave will be pushing in. Blacklist don't even need to look for a team fight here. This is a... This is free. That's why... Oh! Yeah. So, one way to fight against this for RSG is to just go in. It's just, just be decisive and look for a team fight. 
But they need to look for a very, very good team fight. So that's why Light tried to go in there, but didn't find the angle to go for the right players, so went back again. But at this point, this is what you need to do. Like, I see a lot of people... Uh, like, a lot of teams in this position would just go back and forth, back and forth, get fucked, uh, like, out macro basically, and lose the game. At this point, you cannot out macro the team with three base threats. It's simply impossible with this composition, okay? If they had a Benedetta or a Paquito, yes, it's still possible, but to manage the ways on the side. But with this composition, it is basically impossible to out macro Blacklist. So, they should just go for a fight, or they would die. Uh, yeah, now, now they're dead, basically, because they, they tried to manage the waves while also looking for the Lord, and, you know, they're trying to do everything. This is why the Force error is so good when you have three mini waves. Mini waves pushing here. RSG will have to send members down below. Every time they have a man disadvantage, Blacklist can threaten a fight. And if they threaten a fight while holding the Lord, RSG are forced to either fight 4v5 or back away. If they fight 4v5, they're at a disadvantage. If they back away, the Lord is free. If they don't do anything, the Lord is free and the mini waves will be crashing, so... Uh, so many force errors by uh, Blacklist and it's GG. And that's Nas with a three man penalty zone, four man knock up there by Lord, and the eternal guard, Yue with a penalty it's zone not as GG. well, that's going to be the cursed blast, and because of that combo, RSG are fighting back, Nas going after Sasui, look at Edward with a primal and it is GG, okay. goes down to the hands of Yue, blazing to that was super Edward. scary that's for Blacklist, list. because... Will not be able to end it here. Maybe the Lord still coming in. The minion waves as like, well. Blacklist should not have actually gone into the base there. They had an evolved Lord. They could have waited for the evolved Lord and gotten the damage reduction. But it's still a win. It's still out mechanic. Out micro RSG. You have, dude. Look at that zoning. Like this this thing, the sacrificial play technically, because you should die here, is so worth it for Blacklist. Because for RSG, the only main damage source is Kusei on the carry. So if you zone him from this team fight, if if your team can hit the enemy front line, but Kusei can only hit you and technically be forced to hit you when you winter as well. It's the... I honestly give this game to Yue. Like, my, my MVP is Yue. I wonder who MVP is. It's Haji. I, I think this is uh, this game is Yue. For me, especially. Like, god damn. Yue. So good, so good. Alright, let's move on to game number three.